Hey YouTube, welcome back. For about a week now, we've been working on a Firestarter's Torch contest. Firestarter's Torch was bugged for a while, but now it's fixed. So we're celebrating the fix of the Torch. It does give you more fire damage now, and we have lots of build submissions for the build contest. So the payout of this is going to be some gift subs to twitch.tv slash parrythepig, where we are currently streaming right now. Got lots of people here in chat, and we will be voting on these, uh, on these builds at the end of the contest here. So at the end of the video, you can see timestamps in the uh, in the description of the video as well. So we have about 14 builds to go through. There'll be chapters for each one of those. At the very end, we're looking for builds that are good, but maybe more importantly, or perhaps equally important, we're looking for builds that are sweet. So even though something like Firestarter's Torch, maybe with one or two LP on it, would be quite good for Warpath. You could play Ignite Warpath. You could play Crit Warpath. It's probably, if I had to guess, not going to be the winner. So with that, let's get it started by talking about the very first build submission that I think was submitted on the very first day, Warpath. Let's jump into it. So this one here, for instance, I'm going on holiday, but here's the idea. The build is Fire Warpath with Smite as a buffer. Why did I choose the build? I'm not a fan of spinning and subsequently winning, but the game was throwing Warpath items at me. So Fire Stars Torch is doing a couple of cool things for us. The reduced mana cost allows us to cast Smite while, uh, while spinning, which I like that. It's a great observation. Smite gives us the 20% attack speed and uh, 20 melee fire damage. So we're primarily a uh, melee crit build, but the added fire damage over time is a bonus as we do have some ignites. Yeah, maybe, sure. And of course, the more damage enemies affected by spreading flames, now that it's bug fixed, is excellent. So this build uses Eye of Reen. I think every melee crit fire paladin should use Eye of Reen. It's a very good item. We boost our crit damage, but also the spreading flame damage it ignites. All right. So we have a build planner here. We'll pop this open. And then more importantly, I want to see the gameplay footage. So let's load this up and take a look at what this person is doing here. We have our Eye of Reen, a Fire Star Torch. We have, oh, ooh, man, look at that quality. Can I, can I have like slightly more quality? Crit multi, melee fire damage at night. Yeah, you know what? That's a pretty good Ivory too. Or sorry, uh, fire starter storage. Ooh, look at that. I feel like it in terms of effective HP, you probably ought to be using a um what do you call it? Wings of Argentus, right? Yeah. Rigging the vote by telling you that it's not sweet. Listen, if it ends up being sweet, awesome. But if I had to guess, looking like I, we already kind of looked at the builds, I already made the poll for voting for later on. There are some pretty weird looking builds out there. And like, even if this is good and it does look quite good, like this is, this is one of the big differences between, um, what do you call it? Between Paladin Warpath and like Void Knight Warpath, right? Like a Paladin Warpath build, your damage is significantly more front loaded because it doesn't rely on the ramping up of time rot and it also doesn't rely on the um on the echo mechanic for single target we have like carefully make the triangle to make your echoes appear on the same enemy as you're uh, currently hitting so we got an idea of what's going on here i don't think there's any like secret hidden mechanics but i i think i think this is the only build out there that put melee fire damage onto their lp fire starter torch so shout out to them for that Let's pop open the planner real quick so we see what's going on here. We have our um, Doom, which is great. You can get even more damage if you wanted to. You could always use the Shatter Chains uh, Belt, which gives you 5% more damage per stack of Doom. So 20% more damage overall could be juiced out of this build. It's pretty cool. What's this, this thing do? Current Manigan's Ward, movement speed. All right, nothing. Nothing. Got it. We have sigils, we have some endurance threshold, flat damage, a bunch of crits. And yeah, having having smite proc only for utility, for the attack speed and the uh, global melee fire damage, is kind of cute. Uh, remember that warpath snapshots. So like after smite hits something, you probably want to stop warpathing and then start warpathing again so that you can take advantage of the buff that you have at that point, right? Pretty cool. Is there an LP Ivorine? A 2 LP Ivorine? With melee attack speed and armor shred. That is a juicy Ivorine. Holy crap, dude. All right. So pretty cool build. I like it, but we got to move on, right? We got 14 of these and I've only found two of them that I could lump together. So here's build number two. 
Five Starters Torch Blade Dancer. So this is our Ignite Decoy build. Um, it says this build's not really tanky, but it, they did say that they were doing 300 corruption well. So let's see what they have to say. The idea about this build uh, is doing a Blade Dancer, Five Starters Torch. I equipped the item and I equipped a Acid Flask directly at the very beginning of the game. While running Echoes, the build focuses on getting a big burst of Ignite with huge penetration on enemies from Decoy plus Acid Flask, four of them with your shadows, and then Umbral Blades as well. This is enough to kill most noble enemies, together with Dash automating your Acid Flasks behind you, and then Umbral Blades and the Fire Dragon Shoes. The clear feels quite good. You are a Blade Dancer after all. For single target damage, you can amp our damage with Cinder Strike, getting the Oil Coating buff, and then throwing our Decoys and Acid Flask after that. Throne of Ambition gives us more damage because it gives more fire damage, and that's great. Probably every build here should have Throne of Ambition in it. The build is not really tanky because of all the uniques that we're running. We've got some armor. Resistance is not capped. Slightly over 2k HP. Big dodge spikes. I hear you. All right. So this is 300 corruption. Shout out to everyone who, like, played the build and did more than 100 corruption. I know there's some people who were busy and were not able to do that, but I appreciate seeing... Um, Seeing a little bit of extra corruption in there. Hopefully people are like playing these builds and enjoying the builds. What is, I don't think there's any bonus that a Blade Dancer gets for um, for using a Scepter, right? There's like, there's Mace, Sword, Dagger. Mace, Mace, Mace Sword, Dagger, something else? Axe? But like, you don't really get anything for being a, um, for being a Scepter wielding Blade Dancer. Hello, kitty cat. Oh, goodbye, kitty cat. So we're kind of running around. I want to let's let's kill some monsters. I get it. You're a blade dancer. We're nice and fast. We're playing ignite. Easy. Too, easy. Too easy, dude. Have they attacked with cinder strike yet? Oh, right there. That is a little baby cinder strike. That is some tiny little AOE. All right, I hear ya. Uh, and then there was a single target thing here. Let's take a look at the single target real quick. So this is 146 more health. This is about 300 corruption. Uh, enemies deal damage. I, does this guy count as undead? He kind of looks undead. So this is damage, damage, and rage. It's kind of a lot of damage. If he's an Infernal Shade of Aerobus, does he count as undead as well? Okay, so it looks like Acid Flask is primarily something that we're just procking off of Shift. Got it, got it. And then we're just like Cinder Strike and then Decoy off cooldown, right? Okay, got it. Uh, let's take a look at the build planner real quick. We'll load this one up. What do we have in the chest piece? Fire penetration with ignite. Levels of acid flask, throwing attack speed. Do we really need the uh, the throwing attack speed? He's like, how often were they really using their acid flask? More damage, poison chance, poison duration. And then the fire penetration gets on uh, gets converted over here. 100% more hit damage, but we're in Ignite build. So strange. And then it has like a tiny bit of Ignite chance as well. It's got 100%. 100% is nothing to scoff at. Acid Flask, Decoy, damage, more damage. Umber Blades over here. Umber Blades not converted to fire because we don't care about the hit damage. We only care about the Ignites. And we're not doing any like bleed conversion stuff down here. Are we Malin's Hubris? We're not Malin's Hubris. Okay. So we're not like bleed converted to Ignite. We're just doing this. This is a nice way of getting a little bit of leech in the build. I like that. Then two LP Calthon Blasting Agent. All right. I want to see, do they flow down here? So they don't care about the bleed chance when consuming flow because they are not a melee and super build. Melee damage, melee crit multi, no. Damage when consuming flow. It's like one point here, one point there, huh? I'm, I'm a little bit surprised not to see more points there. I like the idea of not using apostasy. We have all of the damage while dual wielding, a couple points here. And they were notably not a crit build. So we're skipping on the rest of that. What's here? 
If you have a bow equipped, you deal increased elemental damage. Wait a minute. Uh, does this work for snapshotting your elemental arrows? First of all, don't you snapshot your elemental arrows. I know you can take this node and you can take the resistance per elemental arrow and then you can let it passively generate some arrows and then you can take the bow off and put on your melee weapons and you still have the arrows as a buff. I know you can do that, but like, come on. Is that really what we're doing here? Are we really snapshotting? How dare you? But uh, let's close this out and bring it back over here. Uh, let's see what else they had to say. I'm surprised how well this build performed. Didn't expect to push far into empowered models at all. The damage is surprisingly good. The build feels good to play, making it enjoyable to play around 200 300 corruption. Single target's decent. If you want to be more tanky, probably drop Acid Flask for Shurikens. Um, and then there's some list improvements here. The build works. Definitely not the best. I think it casts a good light on Last Epoch. A build like this can, that can achieve... Um, being outside of the meta, but still viable. All right, I like it. I like the idea a lot. Let's uh, let's keep going. So we have build number three here. Uh, build number three, we're, we're only going to glance at it for a second. Um, I was I was a little bit skeptical of this, and I I think I think the reason that we're only going to do this for a second is the end of this video got me laughing. So this person is like. They're trying to kill some monsters. This is tier three Jura, I believe. They died as some monsters. And they just have like excellent comedic timing where they uh they finish the loading screen and then they just throw their items on the ground. <laughs> so I like I like the idea of this build. Let's talk about it real quick. But this is a um catastrophe of fire <laughs> build. So they are playing a, they're playing um, Firebrand to generate spell damage, and then like Firebrand also generates mana for them, and then they uh, they blow through all of their mana by channeling Fireball. And for me, I've never seen channeled Fireball before. I've seen channel Fireball. I used to watch the videos, but channeled Fireball, I haven't really seen it. So this is a this is a person trying to experiment with a ward on dodge items. They're using a good handful of them in the build planner here. Um, seems like a proof of concept of a couple different things, but it doesn't quite look like it panned out for them. So they have the Telefoon's Mirage, which is dodge while channeling. They have Ward giving you dodge here as well. And then the Close Call, which gives you dodge rating for each hit you've blocked recently. It's kind of a weird item. I've only ever used this in a funny way with Forge Guard, but uh, I like that they were experimenting kind of outside the meta along with the rest of their stuff here. So what's notable about this, this is a crit spell build. It's not playing ignites, right, spreading. Oh, spreading flames damage, weird, gotcha. So spreading to spreading flames damage is something that I'm a little bit surprised about because remember spreading flames only has a maximum stack size of one, which makes it a bit harder to scale than like other ailments in the game. So even something like doom, I like doom and like you can kind of make usable doom builds, but it only has a stack size of four and then like Sometimes you get into sticky situations where like a new stack of doom overrides an older one, even if the older one was bigger. So we can talk about that more if we need to, but I've never seen fireball used like this. And I'm glad that they were working on, um, working outside the box. Is this ignite? Ignite say four, four, six, six. They have all this note here. Yeah. 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 They don't have any fire shred. I thought this was a spell build. You start and figure it out. Is it not? What is this thing? Spell damage. Flame wave stuff. Burning flame stuff. Ignite. It is ignite. It's ignite because they're taking all the ignite nodes and enchant weapon over here. I thought this was a spell build. All right. So <laughs> because it's a spell build, you have to remember Firestarter's Torch only has three spell damage on it instead of like 60. So I would anticipate that if somebody were playing, trying to play a spell crit build with Fire Shadow's Torch, that they would have something else in their build that provides a bunch of flat damage. And I don't quite see this here outside of Firebrand, but it looks like it didn't quite pay off. So, all right, let's move this over to the other screen like this. And let's move on to, uh, I think this is build number four at this point. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there we go. So build number four. This is a 
Ignite Hammer Throw character. So when I think about Ignite Hammer Throw, I would think about using Mail and Subris and then having an axe in my hand that has like a bunch of bleed chance on it and then converting all of my bleed chance, you know, chance to bleed while uh, on high health, chance to bleed while holding an axe, and then converting that all into Ignites using the gloves. So Firestarter's Torch, uh, you can't put an axe in your offhand as a sentinel. You also can't put a, 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 a scepter in your hand in your offhand as a sentinel. You can only put swords in your offhand as a sentinel, which is weird. So that's like the beginning and the end of how much thought I put into it. So I'm glad that somebody else tried this. Let's see what they have to say. We're stacking a bunch of ignites. Uh, so the hammer throws and the smites would both do this. This build is based off the popular Devotion Smite Hammered In, but it replaces the mana stacking and using Smite uh, to critically hit in favor of using it to stack Ignites instead. We have about 200 300 stacks and 999 on big bosses like Emperor of Corpses and Lagan. Love it. We got some pros, lots of self healing because this is reasonable effective HP. It's not really effective HP, but I do love builds that have good sustain in them. This, this makes me happy, even though it's not technically HP. Throne of Ambition, Bastion of Honor. Love it. No mana problems. Sweet. What about the cons here? Reliant on a bunch of unique items. I feel like every Ignite build wants a ton of unique items in it with lots of LP. And to me, that's exciting to min-max to spend a bunch of time on. But I understand that. Slow wind-up, not a good league starter. Less damage potential than Holy Trail or Devotion builds. Yeah. So let's pop open their, let's see, Dream Gear. Let's take a look at the Dream Gear because like this is what they wanted to do. So like damage over time, ignite on hits, the old Bastion, a dream planner with no LP on Bastion. What, what a, what a humble person. <laughs> Fire damage, health, stuff, stuff. Let's see, damage over time, throwing damage, the minus three. You can probably seal the minus three mana cost and then also have elemental damage over time. You could be greedier on your dream planner. It's all right. This is something that I had to figure out as well. Do you want to use the Throne of Ambition for 40% more damage if you only have three of your smite idols here? I'm not sure about that. Got to figure out um, where all of your damage is coming from. Because this is an Ignite build and the hammers are also dealing damage, I think it's a good choice. But if this were like a Devotion build, for example, I think you'd want as many smites as possible. I think? I'm not sure. We have another build planner coming in the future that'll uh, try to answer that question as well. So we'll save that conversation for then. See, so Volatile Reversal, Damage Over Time, Stuff, Holy Aura. Not taking the Haste in Holy Aura. Man, I love the Haste in Holy Aura. Why, why don't you like Haste? And then Smite over here. Oh, this is a Smite build, isn't it? Interesting. So they grabbed a bunch of nodes for attacking cast speed and Smite. Uh, when Smite ignites, remember the more multipliers in Smite will apply to your Ignites as well. So I would have expected that if Smite was used for damage, you'd also be taking some of these nodes down here with Sacrifice and with Atonement to uh, get like another 100% or 250% more damage on the, uh, on the Smites generated by Smite. I would have expected that. But okay, this is more of like a utility setup over here. The person whose build this is said, I was today years old when I learned this. See, that's why we talk about things, so that we can learn. Cool. All right, so that's neat. I want to see what the uh, what the video looks like for this. Let's take a look. Click. Is it Tier 4 Jura? Coming in hot, baby. Show me Tier 4 Jura. I feel as though... I feel as though this might be a struggle. We'll see. Oh, look at that flip. The perfectly timed flip. Woo! Oh my god, the damage. Okay, okay. So like, Drawer's got a small hitbox. It's hard to get all the smites to proc. Oh, it's so well-timed. Completely unethical. Reminder to everyone that flip-flopping like that is a bug. It will be fixed someday. It is not intended to be able to do that. You are supposed to engage with the boss mechanic, not simply cheat it. <laughs> do, do, do. So you can kind of see, like, there's not that many smites going off. 
Like, she's got a small hitbox, but remember, we also only have three smite idols instead of four because we're using the Throne of Ambition. And I think that's okay for this particular build because as we're going Ignite, the hammers are dealing quite a bit of our damage as well. It's not only smite dealing damage. Bonk, 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 bonk. You could have killed him. All right. And then I assume that the uh, the gameplay over here is going to be approximately the same. This is a uh, this is fire. Uh, let's click over to this real quick. This is fire damage though, and like fire ignite. So remember, one of the things that make your clear speed so good on a devotion smite hammered in is having the lightning tendril nodes over here. But this build cannot do that because if you were to take these nodes, you'd be converted to lightning, and notably, all of your ignite would become electrified. So. If there are a way to get like global electrify chance, if you could make your hammers electrify, maybe you could play like an electrify hammers plus electrify smite. But that's not really a thing right now. So going ignite, this person chose to go non-converted, only single target smite, not going for any, any of the extra clear that you would normally get from those nodes over there. Cool. All right, we have another build planner that's kind of in the same veins as this. So we're gonna skip uh, one or two of these and go down to this one. This is from X1, 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 X2. And this is another Ignite Smite Hammered In. So we're gonna lump the voting for these two builds together. So this person was using a Flare's Pride instead of using a Bastion. Flare's Pride is a bunch of chance to uh, bleed on hit, and then with Mail and Hubris, converts the bleed on hit into Ignite on hit. So uh, yeah, the, the, another observation here, which was actually, as we learned, unintentional. Um, this person did not know how more multipliers worked on the tree. And then this other person says like my, you know, my build is different because I spec damage instead. But yeah, I hear you. So this build's fun to play. It's even more fun than the bleed version because spreading flames is so nice to see. And I kind of agree. It's, it's neat. <laughs> I think a well-crafted torch could outpace a dragon flame or a dragon bone ax with an ignite setup for like the real min max version. But until you get to the real min max, then maybe just a dragon bone axe again with the conversion with Malin's hubris would be a better uh, choice for it. So this is going to be about the same, but we'll take a look at the YouTube video anyways. Let's skip ahead. This person was doing uh, about 200 corruption, it looks like. And this is damage, one damage modifier, one health modifier. I'm going to go to... I'm going to see some clear speed. Let's go over here. Man, I wasn't really an appreciator of Shield Rush until I played it recently. When you know the terrain and you know where the uh, where the maps have these curves and like where the, uh, where the bumps in the road are, like you really get paid off well. For having good game knowledge, because you can just zoom through the entire map. Love it. Can you just stop looting? Get out of here. Stop looking at the boots. Like, Man, maybe those boots are better than mine. And then once again, this is a smite that is only spec for single target, because if you convert it to the uh, AOE thing, you lose ignite and it becomes electrify instead, and then your build's kind of all over the place. So that is that is what this build is doing here. Let's click off this. All right, so those are the two Ignite hammered in builds. Roughly the same build, one with a little bit more damage using Flare's Pride and the other one with a Bastion of Honor. So let's scroll back up. We have a different build to look at instead. We're gonna look at this one next. So this is someone who is playing a uh, Umbral Blades crit character. So Umbral Blades, when you convert it to fire and the explosion, uh, I guess when you convert it to explosion, it gets the fire tag. So using the fire starter's torch um, in a Umbral Blades build kind of makes a lot of sense. You don't miss out on flat damage because it's not a melee build, and you don't miss out on um, spell damage because it's not a spell build either. So I think these throwing builds have really hit on something here. Let's read through this. They said I didn't put the blessing in uh, until reaching power because I didn't really worry about it. Overall, I think that this... Sorry, it feels like it could go a bit better than what I have with the appropriate gear and blessings, but I felt very squishy the whole way. So, though I felt a bit better once I got the helmets, 
Um, some better leech would have helped. Cool. Are they ignites? I went for nose bleed chance. Oh, okay. This is ignite. Got it. This is a. Let me double check my notes real quick. Yeah, this is this is uh ignite. Ignite umber blades. Whoops. Whoops. This is the only umber blades build, right? Okay, yeah, this is the only Umber Blades build, and it is a Ignite character. Let's take a look at their... Let's go with Robus. I want to see some boss kills this time. Yeah, Firestar's Torch with a uh, Nagasa Scimitar in the offhand. So if this were crit, they'd go Katana in their offhand. But they are going for their uh, damage over time, Nagasa Implicit. How's this look? This is 100 Corruption, High Health Take Less... Health, health, damage. Did I mute it? There we go. Slightly more than zero audio. I can appreciate it. Oh, it's Chakram's as well. Wait, is it? Where'd the Chakram come from? Oh wait, are they throwing Chakram off of shift? That must be it, right? Like they're throwing them there, right? I... Because they're, they're, they're Chakram's on right click, right? I'm confused why you wouldn't simply throw more Umbral Blades. Yeah. Like, Umbra Blades are nuts, right? Why... Why would you worry about throwing Chakrams when you can instead throw Umbra Blades? But, like, the Chakrams aren't dealing fire damage, are they? I guess... Let's go... Let's go take a look at their build planner. This one here. So the point of using a fire starter's torch is to get more fire damage, right? Right, because they're ignite. I forgot. I totally forgot. They're ignite. That's so weird. Um They are ignite. But they they put points into base crit and they put points into hit damage. Got it. We don't have shift shadows behind us. We have sync strike, shurikens, and then we have throwing leech, but we're not really a throwing build because we're, we're igniting, right? Shurikens bleed chance. Gotcha. What more multipliers do we have here? So like we have uh, damage per Dutch Shroud. And then, like, maybe there's a more multiplier. And then, like, 250 here. With a dagger. They're not using a dagger, right? Okay, so that node's not doing anything. They have Shred on, uh, Shred Armor on Bow Hits. Damage for skills used by stuff. Damage over time, alien damage over time, damage over time, fire stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Let me see their passes real quick. A little bit of defensives. A little bleed converted. And then again, we don't get any scepter bonus. We're skipping all that. And then they've bypassed all of these. We don't have flow. Like we're not really using a melee attack. So it's just shadow damage there. Gotcha. Okay. I'm, I'm starting to figure it out, Chad. Yeah, weird. I, I thought this was going to be an Umbral Blade crit character. Because the Umbral Blades convert to, a, uh, to fire damage. They do, right? I'm pretty sure they do. Let me, let me make sure of that real quick. It says... 
Does anyone in chat know, does Umbral Blades gain the fire tag? When you take the explosive blades? I'm pretty sure they do, but I should fact check that, shouldn't I? If someone in Twitch chat could tell me live, I would appreciate that. Yeah, cool. All right, let's let's keep moving on, and then I'll wait for somebody to um to help me out with that piece of information. The next build, I've been told that this one is notable. The base damage is still fizz. It's split fizz fire. Okay, so like the adaptive damage that you put onto it be split. Man, split damage. Split damage. All right, so this is Zekker. Zekker is someone we've had the podcast before. We know this guy. And he says, I'm submitting my build earlier too because I'm out of town for the weekend. My build has a lot of damage. I hope this interaction can be utilized or further improved by others, at least in some manner. So I'm playing, excuse me, Infernal Shade Necromancer. Man, Zekker probably had a horrible time playing that build. And you'd be right. But the play style is a bit too involved for my taste. Uh, there's some feel bad moments due to the issues with Infernal Shade and Sacrifice, but the damage is so insane because you can basically wrap it up or ramp it up infinitely. I wonder if this is a bug, but we'll see. It doesn't give Umbral Blade the full fire tag, only the explodey part. Okay, gotcha. All right, so the highest dummy tick is this. So it's 9 million. Is this the infinite damage thing that we used to talk about? I I wonder if this is the infinite damage bug that we used to talk about. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Tier 4 Kremers kill. Metal.tv slash game slash last epoch slash clips. What on earth website is this? Alright, show me. In theory, they fixed that. Oh, so this is a different infinite damage bug? Uh, I don't know what I'm about to watch here. So this is tier 4 Kremeris. This person has six... Yeah, six skellies here. So Dread Shade, Infernal Shade. And then they're spamming... Something. I don't- I don't know what they're spamming. Dread Shade? Chat, that is a lot of damage. I'm gonna have to watch that again. I don't really know what's going on. Oh, is this Skelly Mage Sacrifice? No Skelly Mages. I hardly know what's going on here. Hold on, let's let's watch more videos real quick. Uh let's see this thing real quick. I'm I'm not entirely sure what's going on yet. Hello and welcome everybody. Zekar. <laughs> um Zakar here. And uh yeah, I'm just here to show you my Firestarter Torch character for Perry's competition. Uh, I have a Necro. Uh, as you can see, we have the Fire Starters Torch equipped. We also have um, a plethora of horrible skills on our bar. But what if I told you they're not so horrible? No, they're still horrible in some areas, but, but, please, please bear with me. There's so, a lot of build up. <laughs> just to, to, to get, like give you a quick overview of the build, um, we're using Infernal Shade. Uh, essentially, we are abusing. Um, game mechanics that uh i don't believe are bugged uh they have been in the game for quite a while some of them added but uh i don't know if they really took into consideration a lot of the things that you could do with necro some of these things weren't really that impactful right um in the past until a new node came so um this is built you have zombies uh for the most part the only thing that's important with the zombies is the fact that it's giving us some sort of sustain on aren't really that fear which is pretty nice our summon skeleton is mostly for sustain. Um, we're getting three zombies, I mean, sorry, three skeletons per cast. Um, we are necessarily that important, but it does help, as I said, with uh, some minion things that we are doing. So skill number one, not important. Skill number two, not important. What's this thing do? Infernal Shade. 
the bread and butter. Mm -mm -mm. All we're doing is getting blaze shade and then more damage and then chance to reattach and this maximum shades node. That's pretty much it. You could potentially respec out of these nodes, go one here, have some extra points to play around with. Three extra points, or I guess two extra points to play around with. Don't know what else you get, but yep. Um, you could also swap some of these points over to increased area, as that might help with this will help enter. This is this is then we have sack helps us with our clear, so we're taking some damage. Uh, the main star node, the, the functions of this build are this node right here, the infernal shade damage. If you cast sacrifice while you control at least one minion, all of your active infernal shades have their remaining duration reduced to two seconds, but deal significantly more damage for the remaining duration. All of your active infernal shades go to two seconds and get 250% more damage. Got it. Is that a new node? Is that it? modifier is 250% more damage. Uh, this is a stacking buff. Doesn't apply to the ailments, doesn't apply to the sub skills, but what? This stacks? That is a pretty fucking important piece of information. What? Okay. What? Um, the buff does stack and uh, essentially just reset your infernal or it sets your infernal shade cooldown to two seconds and you get two seconds of this to stack this right um, but it's not right right we have dread shade uh, and I'll, I'll explain that but essentially with this um, this three plus minion node we get some area and that area helps us chain so that's why I have this and that's why I kind of Keep some minions. I, I think the chaining of sacrifice is still um, bugged though. This dread shade. Man, dread shade's so great now. So with dread shade, what we're doing is we are uh getting our more damage, applying it to ourselves, getting our armor, obvious, and these are normal things. We are also getting sacrifice cast three times per dread shade. Uh so we cast sacrifice three times, and then at the same time, every time we cast dread shade, it's refreshing our infernal, our infernal shade duration. So what ends up happening is we have this infinite ramping uh, amounts of damage just from the uh, sacrifice node and the fact that we are refreshing our duration on cast, right? And getting a bunch of sacrifice cast. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, not a bug. Eh, eh. Um, All right, just really good you probably could have started the video with that. That's pretty fucking important. Um, rambling, build issues. Chat, there is nothing that I like more than honesty. If if the problems with the build takes you three minutes to cover, like, that's the best part of the video right there. We're not going to watch this on, on stream right now. But, like, I love when people are honest and they're like, yeah, the build sucks because of X, Y, and Z. The build are the fact that uh, sometimes the Infernal Shade doesn't attach to enemies. Uh, sometimes the... A scene on, empowered monolith. And as soon as I have, like, a single target that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, that is... Uh, have the shade attached. Uh, I just, I just uh, start doing the single target combo, I guess. That's what I'll call it. And like sometimes the shade does an awesome job at clearing. You know, it's spreading everywhere. But I'm telling you, there are feel feels bad moments where it's not near as fluid or or, or great at chaining. But yeah, this is. Uh, Let's see, let's see the empowered like shade. A bossing scenario. Uh, just a live, a live bossing scenario, you know? This yeah, is uh, damage, health. That's it? Damage, health? That. And then I just do this. Holy shit. This is... This is like uh, maybe 120 corruption. You know? It's like pretty, pretty low corruption, that. but that's still a lot of damage. And then I just do this. QR, QR, Skelly, Dreadshade, Skelly, Dreadshade, Skelly, Dreadshade. All right, listen, I didn't expect to take this long to uh, cover one particular build.
but I really wanted to know what the hell was going on, and it took me a while to figure out what the hell was going on. So we're going to keep going to the next build. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Uh, next build down here, this is uh, this is the Firefly. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, let's go to in-game build planner so we know what's going on. This is a Primalist. Ignite, Firestarter's Torch, damage over time. Swarm Blade, Ignite, Tornado. So notable, what's going on in my mind immediately is uh, Sprig and Form is giving us crit chance, which we're not using. It's giving us flat damage, which we're not using. So maybe Sprig and Form sh like, could like not be here, perhaps? It's really only giving us um, crit avoidance here, right? And the other thing to note is that in the ailment tornado swarm blade builds that we've seen in the past, particularly Frostbite, which is really popular like last season uh, before 0 0.9, we saw people using the uh, storm orbs with a bunch of frequency on them because they hit very, very fast and it stacks up damage very well. So you want a bunch of small hits if you're playing some sort of uh, ailment build oftentimes. Um, comparing that to something like this, this is like Ignite per second. It's one Ignite every two seconds and then 200% increased frequency here. So this doesn't scale with like hits. It's just like you have to stand on top of the enemy. So um, I would I would have expected to see these things over here. These nodes in Tornado do not scale with chance to Ignite on hit. So something like Malin's Hubris might find itself out of place here, depending on the rest of the build. So let's go find another rest of the build. They said, uh, I wanted to use the two skills available to Primalist and Tornado. Seems like a reasonable one to pair with the Fire Star's Torch. But I came up with basically a worse version, a worse version of Lightning Bug. It's pretty cool to be a walking fire tornado. I agree with you. So converting Tornado to fire allows a decent few Ignite stacks and some more modifiers to beat them up. And being able to stack multiple Tornadoes on top of your head is very nice. I'm using Malin's Hubris and converting all the Bleed stacks from Serpent Strike and Swarm Blade form to more ignite stacks and having maelstrom running for the buffs. So I think the ignite hits are only really coming from swarm blade or arm blade slash itself. Because like that's that's the portion of the build that's actually hitting, right? And applying the ignites. Is this build good? Not really. Rage is a big problem. Notably, the lightning bug build that I like so much. It has a lot of rage gain on crit. And one of the reasons I like it so much is that it does not have a problem with rage. So this is a damage over time build, and it does have a problem with rage because it's not using the rage again on crit mechanic. So they're using Terra's Path and Terra the Forest to sustain rage. Doesn't crit. Uh, I was quite under geared, so I felt squishy as well. The damage was fairly low. Throne of Ambition would have helped a lot for 40% more damage while bossing, but I really needed some legendary versions of the uniques uh, in order to not be made out of paper. So let's see what their... Um, let's see an echo real quick. Take a look at this. Loading, loading. There we go. Let's see it. This is a hundred corruption with health, damage, health, damage, damage, high health, take less, health. So it's it's almost like four health modifiers or four damage mod or four defense modifiers. Health. Increase take less. Or sorry, a high I'll take less. And then health. That's like three defense modifiers, I hear you. Die, human. I would love to see how this compares to storm orbs instead. Getting rage only with crits is a sad limitation. Yep. If you're not doing the crit stuff, you just gotta figure out something else to do instead, which is why they were doing the uh, the boots plus the amulet. Yeah, there's like rage gain on dodge. Uh, there's like rage gain on kill. There's like a couple things. It's funny, Werebear has a lot of stuff in their Werebear skill tree to give you rage. Like rage on kill, rage on hit, stuff like that. It's not necessarily tied to crits. But for Swarmblade form, you don't really have those. You're kind of tied into doing crits. If you want to, you know, have the easiest setup possible. So let's click off this here. Uh, I think we know what we're doing. 
Uh, we can see the in-game build plan. Let's get to take a look at this. We so we saw this already. Yeah. So they have uh, rage gate every three seconds while in spriggan form. It's kind of stinky, huh? Maybe legacy of the quiet forest ought to be changed. What about like rage gained while transformed? I guess maybe that'd be weird for reaper form liches. But like it would be nice if this worked for you know swarm blade as well, wouldn't it? So they're managing the rage with the Terra's step and tears of the forest. Uh, what else is going on here? We didn't look at their mastery last time, did we? They have twenty unspent points. I assume the next ten points would go into hide skin for some extra defenses. Well transformed spell or melee bleed chance gets converted. Then all their defenses here, all the defensive modifiers. Weird. Weird, it's just, uh, just 17 defensive modifiers wearing a trench coat. All right, let's go on to the next build here. Uh, I think I think the appropriate description of this build here is Infernal Shade Golems. So let's take a look at it, okay? So here's the build planner. And when I don't know what's going on, I will be unsurprised. Lich's Fury, Fire Spell Damage Damage Over Time. Minus mana cost, minus mana cost, fire damage, chill, health regen, double. This might, is this, this might not be real gear. With a two up, okay, so I'm going to assume that this is not <laughs> real gear with 4,000 life. Um, with 1,500 health regen. Got it. This, this might be aspirational gear. Why is the aspirational gear not using a Bastion of Honor? I do not know. Do not ask me. But their Orb Decay is doing less poison damage taken. When you activate it, there's a Poison Nova. Healing. Chance to cast Soul Feast when it hits. God bless, we're not specced into it. Skelly Mage Teleport. Plus Skelly Mages, Death Knights. So Death Knights. Dread Shade. What does this thing do? Converted to poison. Converted to poison. No health decay. Sure. Bone Golem. Bone Golem has a chance to ignite enemies. It also has additional fire resistance and deals more damage over time. And then Infernal Shade attaching to your minions with unlimited duration on your minions. And he has a bunch of fire resistance. Does he like never die or something? Oh, the golem is a portion of your health regeneration. So maybe. All right, maybe, maybe I know what's going on here. Let's my, my brain, my brain's moving right now. They said, now that you opened, oh God, he knew exactly what I was going to do. Now that you open the planet, I don't understand what's going on. Open the fuck on tree and read the, God damn it. I, I just got read like an absolute book. All right. Uh, the bone crush. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I get it. Read like an absolute book. All right. So Infernal Shade deals more damage based on duration. It's infinite damage when placed on a minion. There's a small problem in that you don't have infinite health. Into bone growth. Massively enhanced the life recovery of a golem. Also scaling owner recovery, which in, also, which in turn scales our damage. Uh, one of the big issues Firestarters has is the lack of flat damage. Lich's Envy is perfect for covering this by giving a huge amount of flat. While Bone Golem runs around with a giant blade shade on top of his head for damage, your Skelly Mages carry Dread Shade, mostly just to give you flat spell damage for the blade shade that you put on your Golem's head. No rhythm mechanics. Infernal Shade lets you keep the high damage alive longer since when your Golem dies, it transfers to a skeleton, so you have time to summon a new Golem, which will pick up the shade again to sustain it for a longer time. Wow. Blade Shade is a is a bigger, better Infernal Shade. So if you recast it a couple times to wait until you get a Blade Shade, you can kind of snapshot that over a longer duration. You numb lock your Orb of Decay. I assume what that means is like you turn it off, turn it on. I think that's what it means. All right. Um, there's no video here, which I think is a crying shame, but ha. Huh. Other options down here. Get four Dread Shades, eat more flat damage would be a bit of a minion army and more maintenance though, but I don't like that as much. I would love to see a video of this. 
I don't know if Gavarian has one of those or if anybody else has one that they can put together, but huh, I like it. So this is the Infernal Shade Golem build. Let's go on to the next one. The next one's here. This is Marcho Man. And this is a similar build, but different. This is a golem build using, instead of Infernal Shade, we're using Hungering Souls. So this hybrid build has been a blast trying to maximize the use of Fire Starter's Torch while playing a Fire Lich. Most Fire Lich builds have been used uh, Curse of Perseverance, the staff that allows you to shotgun, to do insane single target damage. This build goes a different direction with the help of three golems. So the three golems provided through Aaron's Will give me two big benefits. First, they allow me to use Unholy Trinity node instead of just having, you know, little skeletons that die all the time. You got three beefed up golems. So I like that idea. It's cute. This node greatly boosts Hungering Souls damage by 150%. Got it. Combined with the Isolation node and the Fire Skull, taking the crit nodes. Is it the crit nodes? Wait, we're taking the crit nodes. So we're shooting one Noggin? Wait, what's our, what's our AoE damage? Uh... So we have one Hungering Soul. One Hungering Soul. Bone Golem is spec to heal us. Summon Skeletons is only spec to enable Bone Golem. And then Death Seal deals AoE damage. Deal. Alright, so all of our AoE damage comes from Death Seal, right? I believe that's the case. Let's take a look at some clear speed down here because I want to know exactly what's going on. Look at the goon squad. Look at the linebackers. One LP Aaron's will. Love to see it. All right, let's go down here. Skipsies, skipsies. All right, so there's no audio on this one, but I, I think what's going on went straight to showing the Bastion. Listen, if I had a Bastion, the very first thing that I would say, like, this build really requires a Bastion. You can't really play this build in no Bastion. Yeah, you can see their uh, their AoE damage is only coming from the uh, from the pulses from Death Seal, right? Do, 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 do. Where's my mouse? There's an... Yeah, my, my eyes kind of hurt. I <laughs> just like, man, the uh, the desert really strains the eye, doesn't it? How's their cast speed? This is just over 100 corruption, right? So this is like, this is pretty low investment into cast speed, right? Wait, where'd the golems go? Did the golems die? It says they have three up here, right? One, two, three. But when you teleport back, only one of them follows you? That's sad. Poor little bone golem. Alright, so that was the Hungering Souls... Hungering Souls uh, golem boy. Let's see some damage here. Yeah, I want to I want to see how much cast speed they really have. Bum, 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 bum. Again, this is another crit build, right? Actually, I only assume it's a crit. Oh no, no, they they expect into crit nodes. Yeah, of course it's a crit build. So one of the things with Firestarter's torch once again is you don't really have much flat damage. So you got to figure out like where is your flat damage going to come from if you're playing a spell character. I'd actually like to see this build using Immolator's Ablation. So if you did if you did this character with a bunch of cast speed, like a bunch of cast speed, and then Immolator's Ablation, that would give you um, like 40 flat damage to make up for the lack of flat damage on the Fire Starter's Torch itself. And I think that'd be a nice way of juicing up um, the damage of this build. Alright, so that was the Fire Lich Golem answer. Love it. We've got a few more builds to go. We're, we're nearing the end here, but let's keep going. So, there's no video for this one, so it's not going to take too long to go over it, but this is Valinov's build. The only thing I know about Valinov is that he loves Shaman, and he loves using Avalanche. So, in theme, 
This is a fire spell EQ shaman. This has big EQ crits that can be cast with fairly fast succession. You're using twisted hearts. Interesting. Easy monolith clear with EQ, instantly nuking things. It has a piano and an active game, uh, active gameplay, which might be a con for some people. The bosses are a little slow for your liking, and you have to deal with mana cost. So having to cast healing totems to clear negative mana. Got it. Okay, so let's see. I guess there's, there's no video, huh? So let's think about this build for just a moment and see what's going on. So we're using Hand of Judgment because it has Attunement and Fire Penetration on it. Spell damage, minus mana cost. I love the minus mana cost, by the way. The fact that Fire Starter's Torch has minus four on it already, and like another minus three is minus seven. Sweet. Um, area. Spell damage, melee attack speed. Melee. Melee attack speed. Melee attack speed for swipe. Melee attack speed for swipe. Okay. Got it, got it. Aspect of the board duration, plus one to tornado. Levels of EQ, bunch of life. Chance to summon a thorn totem on hit. So what's our thorn totem doing for us? Our thorn totem is... Spriggan form. EQ. So we're... I think, I think what's happening here... And this person is in chat right now, so they can correct me. I think we're a human form spell fire EQ. So these are both conversion mechanics. If you take both of these, what happens? If you take both of these, does the... I guess it's initial hit spell damage. It's It goes full fire? God, okay, that's good to know. So it's a full fire spell damage build. And we're not taking the triple hit over here because this is a monumental mana cost. Gotcha. Technically, it's mana efficient, but like sometimes you just don't need that much. Swipe is giving us mana and stuff and health regen. Cool, cool. And then like when we get low on mana, we become a Spriggan form. We cast totems over and over until our mana goes back up and then we swap back to being a human. I think that's what's going on here. Kind of a mana battery spriggan. Not quite. Oh, is it? Is it like flip flip? Just like flip on cooldown because you already go back to uh, to full. Okay, gotcha. You only cast it three times, then you pop back with fifty mana. Okay. okay shouldn't you be able to go back with a hundred mana or like with full mana? We're melee builds with the boar heart here. We have our points to get summoned Spriggan. And then we're all the way up here. And like this is the other portion of having a uh, thorn totem in your build, right? Spell damage per active totem. And we're going to have maybe healing totems as well. But we're going to have like maybe five, maybe six totems. So this is uh, at least at least 150% increased damage for these eight points. Which is pretty good looking. All right. I would, I would love to see this. It's 13 totems. 13 totems? Oh, can you... Can you sprig and form? Last move totems, three. Do, do the sprig and form totems not overlap with thorn totems? You have 13 totems? That's a lot of totems. It's like almost 400% increased damage. I think it's over 400% increased damage, right? They do not overlap the thorn totems and the spriggan form healing totems, which are not thorn totems, even though they're kind of thorn totems. They don't overlap. That's wild. Okay. You have a ton of percent increased damage coming from the node at the top of the shaman mastery, the grove mine over here, right? Or sorry, ascendant circle, whatever it's called. I would love to see a video of this. Maybe we can get one. We'll see. But we're going to move on to the next build here. I got to keep up the pace because there's a lot of stuff to do. We have one, uh, two, three. We have three more builds to go, all right? So this is a fairly similar build. It's not crit, though. So this is a Beastmaster dot Aftershock something. Earthquake. Got it. Let's see what's going on here. Why is there no video of mapping? The mapping experience is so bad that I don't even know how to save it. I love it. 
we're gonna watch this video. This is Fire Aftershock. What are those items? It's it's just <laughs> what? Okay, so we have speed. Wait, I mean, we did, we're gonna weapon swap this thing, right? So we have like the full low life suite of damage, right? So we have like Exsanguinous, Last of the Living, Frostbite Shackles for Ward Retention, this thing to turn off potions. Uh, enemies take percent increased, uh, what do you call it? Melee damage. Akar's Phoenix gives us plus two. And I, I think, I think the scepter is just giving us, oh, okay. So we weapon swap into the fire starters for a single target because the day aside thing is only movement speed for clearing echoes, I guess. I, I, I can only assume that the storm crows are snapshot. I'd almost be disappointed if they weren't. But we'll see. What is happening here, dude? Pretty huge damage. So they cast their aftershocks on a totem, and that helps to guide where the aftershocks are actually going to happen. That is... This is tier four, right? Uh, I don't think there's anything on the screen that says tier four. I assume that it is. Yeah, this is tier four. I mean, that's a fuck ton of damage. <laughs> um, that's the only video we have because the mapping experience is so bad that I did not save it. Let's take a look at the, um, at the description here. So they say Y dot aftershock. In 0 0.9, Beastmaster lost a lot of sources of the crit chance. On the other hand, the crow snapshot trick may be nerfed in subsequent versions. Don't don't snapshot your storm crows, man. On the other hand, let's see. Uh, this means that crows can't get a lot of free defensive prefixes through snapshots, which leads to minion defensive prefixes that will conflict with the crit chance in other gear. And the dot aftershocks don't require crit, and this can be a good solution to the conflict problem. Cool. What does Firestar's Torch do? Uh... Beastmaster can get a lot of flat damage from many sources, so it makes up for Firestarter's Torch low base damage. As a result, 1 LP, Firestarter's Torch, and the rare Solarum Hammer with perfect prefixes are similar in terms of damage. So 2 LP and above, min-maxing, love it. The ideal weapon would be a 2... The ideal weapon would be 2 Hakar's Phoenix, but the axes are too rare. Firestarter's Torch is common, so it can be used as a lower replacement and a transition weapon. Got it. Uh, I want to see this. Weird. So we are mana generation plus stacks call. And then earthquake, we have the node on the very far left. It says aftershocks appear around your totems if they're nearby. So this helps you control where the damage is happening. I like that. Earthquake's base damage is converted to fire damage. So it doesn't convert added damage. I don't think anything converts added damage. So when you say like Beastmaster gets a lot of flat damage, the flat damage is typed damage, isn't it? Um, like this node, which we're not specking into, is melee physical damage. We have attack speed here, damage over time, percent increased damage, Esper the Shark stuff, hit, shark effects, max stacks. Strength. So like they said we have a lot of flat damage, but like we actually don't, right? Beastmaster can get lots of flat damage. Where's the where's the flat damage? What is this thing? This is physical, isn't it? Doesn't this get physical damage? Melee damage? Granting you a d oh look at that. Berserker grants additional melee damage. Okay, so this, this will become fire damage on Earthquake, right? Plus maximum stacks, attack speed stuff, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, alright. Berserking from Warcry is a lot. Interesting. Okay. Dot Earthquake. So apparently, if anybody out there can take this and make the, uh, the mapping experience not miserable, maybe we found something. That's why you want to do melee on your shaman? Yeah, I hear you. Cool. All the fly damage from Warcry, huh? 
Pretty neat. Let's close this one out and we'll keep talking. Got some conversation, conversation, conversation. We have two more builds to go. So the second to last build is a Firestarter Devotion Paladin. So again, this is this is going to be a question of like, where's the flat damage come from? Because we're a crit build uh, and that, that'll be Devotion. So Devotion gives you adaptive damage, which is neat. It'll become fire damage. Um, but this will have less... Uh, less AoE clear because they're not converting their smite to lightning damage, which means you lose out on the tendrils. And then it also means that I wonder if they have four smite idols or maybe only three smite idols because uh, you kind of want a uh, throne of ambition for the more damage. So let's take a look at their build planner real quick. They didn't even tell me they're not going to answer my question. What a scumbag not answer my question. So they have two of them here and nothing else. What a bold choice not to use other idols. So we have fire damage, bunch of mana, bunch of mana, bunch of mana for this. Uh, and for the rings, we're throwing attack speed, minus mana cost. You probably seal the minus mana cost and then put like, you know, fire damage or crit chance there instead. And then let's look at these skills. Yeah, for smite, we have like the... Oh, small, small min-max here, right? So hit damage versus ignited, nice, ignite stuff here. This, this Pillars of Light will never proc because it's, uh, it's only one direct cast. So instead you can go like, let's go like this, we go one, two. So this is a hit damage versus blinded and then has blind chance built into it. You drop these two nodes, you technically have a 20% more damage multiplier. And this is just like a small, small little min-max here. I'm surprised not to see more points spec into attunement or atonement. Um, this is going to cost a lot of life. It's like non-zero amount of life that we've specced into here. So we'll see during the gameplay how they dealt with that. What is this? No way. No, 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 no. They're not doing spiral? No orbit, no spiral? I literally do not believe you. Whoa, get out of here. What? Whoa, whoa, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's the video? Surely. No, it, it must have been a typo. Smite, I didn't get a plus three the entire time. Um, Lamenting just, over know. not getting exalted gear? Yeah. Brother. <laughs> um, this is Me too. See. Imagine oh, there it is. Getting a, uh, a Whew! Family. It spirals, boys. And I got it in a way that, you know, wasted Oh, is this no orbit? Time. God, look at that health, chat. Uh, you get to see how, like, spiky the damage you inflict on yourself is and how... It's I hate it. Because um, if you look... Um, I, I don't mind spiral with no orbit. All damage it makes you less of a melee so character and more of a kiting damage. character, which, for something like Arena, is very relevant. It's kind of cool. Some of the um, choices we made in this build. I, I hate it. <laughs> Look at how much damage you're taking. Like Holy moly, dude. On the screen. <laughs> and then you get all the nice what the heck? Um, if you wanted. Uh, let's do, I let's see a boss over here. being applied because I think there's like some hitbox issues still. Uh, His hitbox so issues? Yeah, 3, absolutely. On the shade before DR started kicking in here, um, Honk. you get those things. This like is about 300 damage. corruption with devotion, with fire, fire enrage and damage. Um, bad gear because I mean, didn't even level to 100 while gearing. And then it's kind of a pain to actually hit him. Yeah, it is kind of a pain to actually hit him. All right. I was going to show some arena, but you have to. This person in the video just mentioned DR. Make sure you type in exclamation point DR in Twitch chat if you're not familiar with that. But let's uh, let's move on to the next build here. So we have only one more build to go over. And it has, oh boy, a lot of text. We'll see what's going on. This is a Ignite Spellblade using Firebrand and Flame Reeve. By default, when I hear Firebrand Flame Reeve, I think about crit. So we'll see how this person used Ignite instead. If I had to guess, it's the fact that Firestarter Sword has no flat damage on it and they wanted to bypass that. So we'll see. Why Firebrand? I enjoy playing Firebrand and Spellblade whenever I have the time for it. 
Uh, the more fire damage per fire brand immediately caught my eye when looking for fire sales to supply. Multiplicative with fire starts more damage and the 50% more from fire brand. I decided to see if fire brand would be playable in this manner into empowered. And I would say it's a lot. Uh, it is. It is with lots of room for changes and improvements. I also wanted a 10th try at making a spell blade with the traditional ward on melee attack and high armor work. Love it. I like spell blade. So the build is quite a bit more ignite chance than what appears in the character sheet, especially if you're using Calamity or Soulfire, because those say ignite on fire hits. Firebrand is scaling uh, fire damage globally for ignites, spreading flames, and melee hits. We are between 100 and 180 attack speed. Wow. Dual wielding. Ugh. And frenzy from Flame Reeve. Flame Reeve is just one big AoE hits. It's both a guaranteed spreading flames application. It does our full ignites, but a little bit extra door, extra more damage multipliers than Firebrand has. The times I decided to dual wield. The times I decided to dual the sword, Flame Reef and Firebrand hit damage are actually noticeable because of the added flat damage on the weapon implicit, whereas Firestarters doesn't have that uh, unless you have LP. This helps smooth out the clear rather than waiting for the Ignites to take down, so it felt more pleasant than with a shield that I played uh, throughout most of Empowered Monoliths with an Exalted Increased Armor Shield. Toward the end of the gearing, I felt more confident in the ward generation enough to use an offhand sword, but uh, if there were too many damage modifiers, I stuck with a shield instead. So they have intelligence for ward retention, ward per second from the passive tree. It scales our fire damage as well. I like this. Enchant weapon gives ignite duration. Teleport for stun immunity. I like this. 64% increased armor. 72% with threat of ambition. So I, I assume this is 72% DR from armor on the uh, on the tooltip on your character sheet. Maintaining about uh, maybe 1,200, 2,600, maybe like 2,000 ward with close to 300 ward retention. I like this as well. Uh... Five minute video with some stuff. So we're going to watch the video and take a look at this. But let's see what their lessons learned are. I decided on teleport of the surge because of stun immunity, especially as a melee character. I think that's a great choice. Uh, two LP versions of Calamity and Soulfire that did not have to using because the helm was too weak defensively. I I hear you. The helmet does not have much armor on it and it's hard to get all the affixes that you want. I do like this. Most ignite builds can be very unique heavy. Uh, you can definitely try using L or sorry LP fire starters. I have Reen, Soul Fire, Calamity, Wingard, Ash Mortality, Fire Dragon Shoes, Stymie Fate. It's it's a lot, and it's actually one of the reasons that I like Ignite builds because the gear ceiling is quite high. Blade weaving toward the end for Flame Reap, but originally just brought in Flame Reap on Surge. Gotcha. Exalted Ward on Kill in Arena. Using Ward on Kill. Okay, I've never intentionally included in the build, but it's cute. And then other ideas here, consuming ignites using a chant weapon. This alters the play style a lot, and I didn't have the time to properly test it out. The only reason not to consume ignites would be if you want damage ticking all the time because you're specifically leeching from damage over time. If you're not worried about leeching from damage over time, then consuming the ignites, make them happen faster, um, even just numb locking it or auto casting it on single target is a pretty reasonable thing to do. So I think I, think I would do ignite consumption, especially as a ward based character. Fire Aura. I'm surprised we didn't see a Fire Aura's build. Some people told me that they were working on Fire Aura's build, but maybe they just didn't pan out. But hit damage, crit, firebrand, high LP fire starters with flat damage on it. Yeah, I like the idea of it. But let's take a look at the video here. Now that we know roughly what's going on. We'll do one little map clear and then we'll do one uh, boss kill as well. I saw an Agentis kill. Nothing like going back for the amulet during your clear speed video. It just, it's so good. One of the things that was most notable to me in 0 0.9 for Flame Reeve is they nerfed the area and it really feels like they nerfed the area. So if I were going to play Flame Reeve, which I probably wouldn't because there's plenty of builds that I like instead, I still think Flame Reeve's good. I am shocked to hear when people say that Flame Reeve is not good. I disagree with them. But if I were going to play it, I would definitely build increased area of effect wherever possible. Because having that huge AoE that you used to, I, uh, I kind of miss it. Look at that attack speed. 900 HP. I wonder if this is the kind of character that might want to do the um, uh, Vessel of Strife with health regeneration thing. I'm going to fast forward through some of this content. Let's look for a Argenta's boss kill. And we'll go right here. Oh, wait. Let's see. This is Hunter Corruption, Res, Res, 
Where's res health, damage, damage. So three defensive modifiers, two offensive modifiers. So it's an ignite build. There we go. Let's see this. This is uh, it's like 120 corruption and high health take less and health. And then there's enrage as well. So right now there's like one defensive modifier. Let's see how it looks. Let's see, just over 100 stacks of Ignite. The damage looks fine. And by fine, I mean like, eh, it's serviceable. I wonder if I would like NASCAR, Chad. Like, I've never really been a NASCAR person, but when I'm watching a video like this, I'm just waiting for a meteor to come out of nowhere and one-shot them. Like, maybe... Maybe I do like NASCAR after all. So that's uh, that's the end of our build contest here. We did 14 different builds. Holy crap. We skipped over, like, one of them or so because I wanted to uh, consolidate them. So I have a poll that I will be posting into Twitch chat. And if you are watching Twitch chat live... Please take a look at this poll here, and I encourage you to vote. And it looks like we have a clear first, second, and third place. So we're going to go ahead and call it then. Last time, I killed all the hype by doing first place first, and then third place third. So let's do it correct this time around. So now that we have our voting complete, we will take a look at uh, the rank three build. Remember, the top three builds are all getting gift subs to the channel, and then you get to brag to other people about how sweet your build was and how you impressed all of the girls. Uh, we have Ignite, Tornado, Swarm Blade. So let's scroll back and take a look at this one here. This was the uh, Become the Tornado and Make Your Eyes Bleed. So this character here with the Swarm Blade form with Malin Subris converting all the bleed chance into ignites and having the ignite per second nodes on the tornado itself. So our rank three, baby, look at this. I gotta say, one of the more visually appealing builds. The uh, the second place build here is, drum roll please. This is a fire spell EQ character. So Fire Spell EQ, this is not the Dot Earthquake character, which had the video. This is the build that had no video. Look at that. This, this might be the only winner or top three that we've ever had that didn't have a video in it. So I'm looking forward to having a video in the future. Valinov, if you're out there, please DM me one and we'll get it up here so we can at least take a look at it off, uh, off this video. But these Fire Spell EQ, remember this was a... Fully fire converted a uh, shaman. So even though you're taking both conversion nodes in earthquake for the spell lightning stuff, everything gets converted to fire damage. And then we don't have the third echo because it costs too much mana. And we have a little bit of extra melee attack speed to help our swipe and the more damage from there pop off. Then we have 13 totems and a little bit of spring and form to help get extra totems and fix our mana when we are out from earthquake. So pretty cool build. That's number two. And the rank one build. The winner of this contest, based on how many times I scratched my head and how long it took for me to understand what the hell was going on, let's uh, scroll back up here to Zekker. Zekker himself with the Infernal Shade, infinitely stacking, cooldown, resetting, Infernal Shade character. Uh, if you didn't see this, I recommend that you go back in the video to where we were reading the, where we where we were reading about this. It's strange, it's beautiful, and it has a 
ton of damage on it. There used to be an infinite damage bug with Infernal Shade. When I first looked at Zucker's build, I was worried that he was just doing another infinite damage build that used the same bug, but that bug got fixed. And this, after learning a little bit more about the build, doesn't seem to be a bug. It's just using game mechanics that may or may not be intended to work together. So it's pretty good right there. Nice. So congratulations to Zekker. I know he's out of town right now, but he will be very, very happy when he comes back from uh, from holiday. So we've got our, our rank three, two and one build. The builds that I was playing, uh, I, I might include a description of the builds that I was playing at the very beginning of this, but I was I was a little bit unimpressed. Um, I learned a lot about Firestar Storage. It was tricky to find a build out there that had the uh, that had the flat damage to get around the fact that Fire Sword of Storage just doesn't, right? It doesn't have much flat me melee damage, doesn't have much spell damage on it. I was expecting to see spell builds that used Immolator's Ablation to get a bunch of flat damage because you don't really have much here. I was expecting to see like maybe a melee build that puts um, flat fire damage onto the Fire Sword of Torch. And the third thing is I was really expecting to see somebody play like a throwing damage build like Umbral Blades, where you don't care about not having the um, the implicit work for your build. Because throwing builds don't really use the implicits unless it's like a crit thing. So that's what I was expecting, but I was pleasantly surprised to see some builds all over the place in terms of representation of like masteries and classes. Like plenty of ignites, plenty of uh, crit stuff going as well. And not one single person using shield throw to stack up emulator's ablation and have it ricochet off your boy to get better single target. Not one single person stole my build idea. Probably good reason for that. So if you like these kinds of build contests, remember that we run these periodically here on twitch.tv slash pair the pig, where we, uh, we're oftentimes playing the game, sometimes min-maxing characters, sometimes just memeing around. We might be playing a B build later today. Not a B tier build, just like a B build. But it might also be a B tier build. We'll see about that. But in any case, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.